Welcome to our weekend newscast. I'm Daniel Che. Let's begin at the nation's top office. President Bakane is seeking ways to overcome the dual challenges of the economy and national security confronting Korea. Our Shin Zemin starts us off. President Park Geun-hye has turned her attention to the economic and security issues facing the country and is expected to emphasize these in an ongoing series of policy briefings from the members of her cabinet that began last Thursday and end later this month. On the economic front, the president is expected to press for action on her reform drive in four key sectors of the economy, the labor market, public sector, education and finance. She has been calling on lawmakers to press a series of pending economy-related bills and is expected to do so again this week. She says the reforms will help the government tackle the current economic uncertainties in part through job creation initiatives. President Park is also expected to ask her cabinet to seek ways to strengthen domestic security in the wake of North Korea's fourth nuclear test, while also fine-tuning the South's response to the provocation. She has been calling for stronger, more comprehensive sanctions against the regime and in particular is urging the North's longtime ally China to play its part in pressing the regime to give up its nuclear ambitions. Meanwhile, the presidential office of Cheong Wadae earlier expressed that it is preparing for any potential provocations from the North, including cyber terrorism. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. International sanctions on Iran have been lifted after U.N. inspectors confirmed Tehran's compliance with measures to curb its nuclear weapons development. The move reconnects Iran with the global economy as billions of dollars of its banking assets will be unfrozen and its oil reserves can be traded freely with the whole world. Kwon jang ho tells us more. Iran is back in the market after the U.S. and European nations lifted sanctions on Tehran and released billions of dollars of its assets. The go-ahead was given after the U.N.'s nuclear watchdog submitted a report confirming Tehran had kept the nuclear promises it made in a historic deal with the international community six months ago. Agency inspectors on the ground verified that Iran has carried out all measures required under the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action to enable Implementation Day to occur. Implementation Day refers to the day the accord went into effect. To get there, Iran reduced two-thirds of its nuclear centrifuges, dismantled a heavy water reactor near the town of Iraq, and shipped out or diluted 98% of its stockpile of low-enriched uranium, all of which could be used to create nuclear weapons. Its proper implementation will be a key contribution to improved regional and international peace, stability and security. The announcement came a day after the U.S. and Iran traded prisoners in an apparent goodwill gesture before the sanctions were lifted. The U.S. released seven Iranian nationals held for sanctions violations, while Iran released five, including a Washington Post reporter who was held captive for over a year. Soon, Iran will regain access to $100 billion in frozen assets and reconnect with the international financial market. The news pushed Iranian stocks up to their highest level in more than five months. Meanwhile, the IMF has said the nation's GDP growth could reach 5% this year, up from its current near 0%. But global oil prices are set to plummet further than the current 11-year low as the world's fourth largest oil reserve is about to flood the market with almost half a million barrels per day. Tehran has not been able to sell oil to Europe since EU sanctions were implemented in 2012. The international community will continue to keep an eye on Iran as part of the deal. The International Atomic Energy Agency has installed devices to monitor its uranium enrichment activities and sanctions related to human rights abuses remain firmly in place. Kwon jang Arirang News. South Korea's foreign ministry welcomed the move as it is likely to encourage the Iranian government to help international efforts toward the denuclearization of 
North Korea. The ministry said Sunday it plans to further promote reciprocal cooperation between the two nations. Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se also sent a letter to his Iranian counterpart congratulating him on the lifting of the sanctions, saying it serves as a lesson to the Korean peninsula. Korea's trade ministry also released a statement saying it will lift restrictions on oil, cars and other items between the two nations and that a bilateral committee on boosting economic cooperation will be reactivated in December. The U.N. Security Council is reportedly reviewing the outline for potential sanctions against North Korea. According to Seoul's foreign ministry, the UNSC could make progress on a new sanction resolution sometime this week. South Korea, the U.S. and Japan have already said they will pursue stronger sanctions against the communist state following its recent nuclear test. China has also agreed to support stronger sanctions against the reclusive regime, but call for a sustainable, rather suitable response. The U.N. body held an emergency meeting following Pyongyang's claim to have tested a hydrogen bomb earlier this month. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon condemned the regime, calling the test profoundly destabilizing for regional security. Despite boasting of breakthroughs in its military and weapons capabilities, North Korea is lagging far behind in most other fields when compared to South Korea. According to a new report by the Korea Development Bank, or KDB, the output of most northern industries hovered at around 10 percent of their respective southern counterparts. While IT, tourism and the service industries have shown some noticeable growth, industries like shipbuilding, auto, fishing and finance have taken significant steps backward. In terms of technology, Pyongyang's industries are frozen at a level Seoul surpassed in the 1980s. According to a KDB official, the North needs to utilize untapped resources, improve its labor management system and be open to greater inter-Korean cooperation in order to make progress. South Korea's new finance minister shared his optimistic view of the Korean economy at a press conference held after Saturday's inaugural ceremony for the Chinese-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank in Beijing. Yu il -ho said Korea is guaranteed to experience an economic upswing in 2016, as last year's economic downturn was caused mainly by unexpected factors like the MERS outbreak and plummeting oil prices. He said the AIIB will play a critical role in helping Korea maintain its economic growth and better cope with economic challenges, as it will provide a new influx of investment capital. The Korean official was one of the foreign dignitaries invited to speak at the opening ceremony, which was attended by Chinese President Xi Jinping. Taiwan has elected its first female president, and the nation is celebrating for now. According to the official central news agency, opposition leader Tsai Ing-wen won the election with more than 56 percent of the vote. Her Democratic Progressive Party favors independence from the mainland, while the Kuomintang, which has dominated for eight years under President Ma ying has forged closer ties with China. The dramatic shift is expected to anger Beijing, which views Taiwan as an integral part of its territory and even as missiles pointed at the island. It's all in Tsai's hands now. The self-spoken U.S. educated lawyer will have to balance the interests of China, which is the island's biggest trading partner, the U.S., its key ally, and the diverse demands of the Taiwanese people. South Korea's former finance minister is the latest addition to the team from Korea, heading to this year's annual World Economic Forum meeting in Davos. According to Seoul's foreign ministry on Sunday, ruling Senri Party lawmaker Che kyung hwan leaves for Switzerland this week. As a special presidential envoy, Che is expected to deliver his opinion on the economic situation in the region and the world. On the sidelines of the forum, the former finance chief is set to meet with founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, the president of Switzerland and India's finance minister. The four-day forum kicks off Wednesday at the Swiss ski resort of Davos and brings together thousands of political leaders, government officials and business executives from around the world. A good night's sleep is priceless. You feel rejuvenated with it, and without it, you feel out of gas. The reason has to do with a housekeeping system that the brain uses to get rid of toxins that could be dangerous to your health. Our Han Daun explains further on the importance of getting your Z's. Sleep is essential for health, but why exactly do we need to sleep? One of the reasons is to clear toxins from the brain. 
During waking hours, toxins build up in the brain, which can interfere with memory and learning. But when we sleep, the brain flushes these neurotoxins out through the glymphatic system. The glymphatic system is activated during sleep. Brain cells shrink to open up the gaps between neurons and allow fluid to wash the brain clean. Back in 2013, a team at the University of Rochester Medical Center that did studies on mice found that the glymphatic system became 10 times more active when the mice were asleep. And last year, UC Berkeley scientists found that the buildup of toxic proteins caused by a lack of sleep can damage the brain, potentially contributing to the development of Alzheimer's disease. We spend about a third of our lives sleeping, and sleep plays a direct role in the other two-thirds of our lives. So it's easy to see just how important a good night's sleep can be. Han Dan, Arirang News. And now for a quick look at the weather before we go. Dress warm and have your masks ready on Mondays. Hull will start the day at a frigid minus 5 degrees Celsius. Chuncheon will be at negative 4 and Taejeon 4 below zero. The mercury won't move far for its Hull rising just by 1 degree Celsius. Chuncheon to minus 2 and Taejeon 1 below zero. It's ex expected to be a bone chilling week all around with fine dust levels going up as well as the week begins. Well, that's Korea for you. Let's check out the weather conditions outside of the nation around the world. That's all from us for now. More updates coming your way at 10 p.m. Korea time. Thanks for watching.